Chad Curdy again. Uh, this is part two of the introduction to the National Electric Code. Um, the first section we left it as we did an introduction for chapter one and we did an introduction for chapter two and we did part of chapter three. And we're gonna pick up, uh, we left it at table 310.16, the single most important table in the NEC code book. And we're gonna continue talking in chapter three, which is wiring methods and material. Um, we will be talking, you're gonna be, be uh, article, oops, article uh, 3.12, there we go. Article 3, article 3.12 and 3.14, very important information about meter sockets and how to size a pole box and a J box and so forth. Um, and, and these are, will be covered um, as we move through. I'm gonna keep moving into, into, from now on, you're gonna find multiple articles that talk about special wiring methods. Wiring methods as in cables, conduits, and I'm just gonna highlight if you are to use an AC cable, and I assume a lot of you are not familiar with the AC cable, later on you will be. Um, an AC cable, you're gonna find all the information. Where can I use an AC cable? Um, how, how, what's the largest size of AC cable? How do you stable an AC cable? All this information is gonna be into all these articles, AC cable 320, then if you're using an FC cable, um, uh, IGS cable, there's so different, many different ways of wiring systems and, um, and equipments in any code book. If you're dealing medium voltage, there's a medium voltage cable for you where you can use for medium voltage. So I'm just gonna move and, and uh, slide through all these, um, uh, scan through all these wiring methods. Another very important wiring, top, uh, wiring method that we use is AC cable. Uh, rigid metal conduit, extremely important. Flexible metal conduit, you're gonna use a lot of these uh, um, uh, wiring methods. Liquid tight, if you're outside, this is, will be your conduit of choice for wiring equipment outside. Liquid tight, flexible metal conduit tying to an equipment. Um, PVC, if you're doing, if you're bringing cables to the, to the building, underground cables to the building, that will be your conduit of choice, using a PVC conduit. Um, so these are very important topics. MC cable, MC cable, if you're doing a commercial building, engineered building, most likely it's gonna be an MC cable specced by the engineers. So you're gonna find information about the MC cable. So these are, these are very, very important wiring methods that need review, and each one of them start with the general information, what the wiring is, installation, where can you install this wiring system, and where can't you install this wiring system, all the way to the construction specification, what type of voltage do you need to put on the cable, what type of construction, how do they build the construction, copper, aluminum, or any other conductive material. So these are very important topic, and I'm gonna keep moving into uh, the wiring methods, approved wiring methods in any C code book, and you can see there's so many, many of them. Um, as you go, um, as you go through, if you're doing some residential wiring, if you're doing some residential wiring, um, uh, an NM cable will, you, will be your cable of choice. If you're wiring residential, you're going to be using raw mix, which is NM cable. Um, so that's another cable. SE service entrance cable is another, uh, SE and USE is another good cable uh, for wiring. Um, EMT, EMT, almost 90%, 90% of your commercial industrial building is gonna be wired with, with EMT. Everything inside can't be wired with EMT unless you have physical need, physical protection, or you're going underground. So that's your conduit of choice. You need to know everything about this type of conduits. Among other things, there's other gutters and all this stuff, but these are the most important. There's also IMC is another very important conduit if you want something between EMT and rigid. So that conduit will get you the IMC to give you protection for your conductors and ease of installation. Um, so these are all, as you can see, all these are wiring methods that you can use that approved by the NEC code book. Um, in 2011, and um, I'm gonna just touch on one little thing here. Cable trays, cable trays, if you're doing industrial application, um, cable trays would be, would, be, um, would be your conduit of choice, would be your conduit of choice. If you're doing uh, cable trays, uh, it's gonna be your conduit of choice, very important, only if it's, you're doing high-end industrial application. 
And uh, so these are, these are an introduction to chapter three, basically, which talks about wiring and material, wiring material. Moving on to chapter four, chapter four talk about equipments, equipments. How do you wire equipments? In chapter four, there is a few articles dear to your heart and it should be dear to the heart of anyone in the electrical industry. Um, if you are to understand the system well, you need everything that you, if I have a switch, how high can I put the switch off the ground? All information, can I mix a 120 switch with a 277 switch in the same box? No, you can't. How do you find that you can't find this information? You can't do it. You're gonna find article 404, talk about switches. Must know, must know. Uh, if you're talking about receptacles, um, what size of receptacle? Where in the code says that I need a tamper resistor receptacle? Where in the code says I need an arc um, fault circuit interrupter for receptacles? Um, where in the code says I need a GFCI? What type of GFCI and so forth? Um, uh, uh, construction of GFCI. All this information you're going to find in Article 406. Uh, switch gears and panels. Um, how do you wire a switch gear? How do you wire a panel? Uh, protection for panels, right? In Article 408. Moving on to fixtures. What's the largest fixture that I can support from a box? All this information is found in Article 410. In Article 410, um, lighting fixture, different type of application for lighting fixture, fixtures. Uh, moving on to appliances are important, but there's more important in this article that I'm gonna mention right in here, which is, um, there's a lot of other things that's important, but the, I'm picking the most important ones. The most important ones is Article 430. Every machine that goes around, you have every machine that has a motor, it has to be ad adhered to the Article 430. How do you size the conductor, the overcome protection device, the control circuit, um, the overload? All this information is going to be found directly into this article, from the motor circuit conductor into the overload, into the branch circuit. If you have a feeder, the control, the control conductor, all this information will be directly into Article 430. If you're having an HVAC equipment, chillers, uh, air conditioning, there's a whole article that talks about HVAC and uh, equipment, heating and cooling and refrigeration, uh, uh, cooling and refrigeration equipment, Article 430. In terms of uh, where do I need a disconnect? Uh, how, what size conductor do I need? What size overcome protection device do I need? All this information you're gonna find it in Article 4, uh, 440. Article 440, very important. Um, Moving on into, into article, talked about this. Um, transformers and generators, and then we will wrap that one. Transformers and generators, what do I need about transformers and generators? If you have a generator, how do you size the overcompetition device with the generator and the conductor from the generator into the first overcompetition device? You're gonna find this information in article 440. 450, every, every building, respected building that you have in the industry is gonna have a 480-277 system and that steps it down into 28-120. How do you install this transformer? What, what's the largest uh, transformer that you can put without a vault, a transformer vault? Um, all this information you're gonna find it in article uh, 450. Um, a couple of others that advanced topics like capacitor and so forth and batteries and equipment over 800. These are for those of you who are gonna go um, deeper into the NEC code book. Moving on into, so these chapter one through chapter four, basically from chapter one through chapter four that we covered so far, this will cover, I believe, 80% of what you need in, in, in almost the electrical industry. 80% of what you need is covered between chapter one and chapter four. Moving into chapter five, chapter five talks about occupancies, special occupancies. Um, if you are to do commercial industrial, and especially industrial, you're gonna be involved in hazardous location, gas stations, and so forth. How do you wire a gas station? Definitely it's different than wiring the shed in your backyard. All this information are the NEC code book, grab all this info and put it right into an article, a chapter called chapter, chapter five. So if I am to highlight one in chapter five, class one, class two, and class three locations, class one, two, three location, explosive, uh, flammable gases, um, uh, and, and, and these are very important um, 
information, a very important location that requires extra attention when it comes to the wiring systems. I can't install uh, an EMT conduit in class one div one. We're gonna know what a class one div one explosion equipment. So these are uh, topics that's very important. Um, uh, intrinsically safety system and, and so forth. Uh, as you can see over here, uh, different occupancies that have been singled out because of how important these occupancies are. Uh, one, for example, aircraft hangars, obviously different than wiring your shed in your backyard. Um, healthcare facilities, you need redundancy of the system, redundancy of the ground, you need isolate, isolated ground. All this information you're gonna find in healthcare. Um, gas station, um, if you are wiring a gas station, you have to go review 514, no question asked. Um, so these are very important topics in this chapter, and, then, and a lot of them are important, but these are the most important ones that you probably will be encountering. Um, as long as we are on this side also, there is manufacturing building, agricultural building. If you live in a rural area and you need to wire agricultural building, there's a whole article how to um, wire it, how to ground the equipotential uh, um, system that you have to design for it. Mobile homes and so, recreational vehicles. Very important topics that you can, uh, you can go when it comes to, you can do when, you, when it comes to the NEC code book in uh, special occupancies. Um, moving on into, I want to single out one very important topic here, and I'm going to use the blue this time, and this topic is temporary wiring. If you are uh, building a stadium, you need temporary power to bring the power to the construction site for you as an electrical contract and other disciplines to do it. So you have to be you have to be very important to, um, to provide the temporary wiring. Since it's temporary wiring for maintenance or for construction or for troubleshooting, there's certain rules that applies to it. So this is very important topic to know. Moving from the um, occupancies all the way into the special equipment, special occupancies into special equipment, the NEC could single out certain equipment with a special rules that only the chapter one through four applies to it only if referenced, only if referenced. For, so you can see um, electric signs, for example, cranes, elevators, manufactured wiring. These are uh, equipments that's, um, that's special equipment that need special attention. Uh, welders, and you can see um, multiple of them. The most important, a few of them I want to single out here uh, that probably will be a swimming pool. If you have to wire a swimming pool, it's different than wiring your bedroom. So a swimming pool has a complete article that, that single out the swimming pool. What type of wire do you use? How do you ground the swimming pool? How do you do equipotential grounding system for the swimming pool? All this information, we're gonna be finding a swimming pool, fountains, spas, and all this stuff. This is a great article to review if you are involved in the swimming pool uh, business. Uh, green, green energy, if you have a PV, PV um, solar photovoltaic system, how do you wire so, so, solar vo photovoltaic system to a building and bring it to the system? Can you mix the DC wires with the AC wires coming from the PV, uh, the PV system? Um, all this information, you're gonna find it into the uh, Article 690 and also uh, fuel cell. All these new technology are listed as a new equipment in a specially designed article for them, specially designed article by the NEC code, uh, code book. Uh, in 2011, they introduced, since we're in the wind energy, now we're introduced into a specially designed article for small wind electric systems, 1,000 kW or less. One, the system is gonna be equal, equal or less. My system is going to be equal, system equal or less uh, 1,000 uh, kVA, kVA. So if you have, uh, if you have a system 1,000 kVA or less, you have to introduce it. Um, you have to apply this Article 690 for it. And that will, the, the last thing on this article that's very important is the fire pump. Um, building code requires fire pumps for certain application. How do you fire fire pump? What's the rating? What type of conduit and so forth? You're going to find it in Article 695.